Okay, are we ready to start the class? All right. Okay, we're gonna put you up and make us small. You're gonna get big. Ooh. Right, Raina? Been trying to do the opposite for months. <laughs> <laughs> oh. you can turn your phone the other way. Uh, we will see more of you. Yep. Oh, no, you're still long and narrow. If you wanted to be wide, you would turn it 90 degree. No, there we go. Yeah, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Let me um, know when you'd like to do the slideshow. Okay. Um, I guess I'll start off with uh, an introduction of the house. This here is the uh, William P. Goodwin house built somewhere between 1874 and 1876. I know that because I searched the records and went far back as I could. And in 1874, Mary J. Goodwin, who was uh, originally a Bragdon, she bought 40 acres from her parents and turned it into a subdivision. So we have four houses that are in pretty close um, pretty close to each other. And this one has the largest lot, and then those lots came later. But in uh, 1875, she sold that lot uh, to Laura Stratton. And then in 1876, she sold this lot, which had the house and almost four acres of land. And it was sold to Isaiah Young, who only lived in the house for a few years. And then he defaulted on the loan and uh, the new Mrs. Goodwin, because Mary J had died, she assumed the loan, she got the house back in foreclosure, and they moved in. And uh, they lived here until uh, Mrs. Goodwin died. Mr. Goodwin obviously died first, being so much older than the second Mrs. Goodwin. And when we started remodeling the house, we found his signature on all kinds of woodwork. Um, it looks like in the 1890s, the house was remodeled, they added new doors, and they added this bump out section here on the porch, made it just a little more decorative. And I'm thinking on the inside, some of the, uh, the woodwork that I've seen in there with his name on it happened uh, in the 1890 uh, remodel, which makes sense because new wife probably didn't want the same house that old wife had. So uh, it stayed in the family, even though uh, some of them lost it in um, foreclosure, then another sibling would buy it, and they kind of bounced back and forth like that all the way up till the 1980s when uh, the lady that I bought the house from, her mother and aunt bought it. So, yeah, it's really just been in three families' hands. So uh, we'll start the, the slideshow so you can get a picture of what the house looked like, um, probably somewhere between the 1890s, you know, up to 1910, guests on the dress. Uh, and then we'll see how the house looked when I bought it or when I found it and what I've been doing to it since then. So go ahead. And you see there that the door, the front door is different than the door that I have and the porch is also different. So that's how I know that there was, there was definitely some renovation work that was done later. I'm very partial to the door that I have now. It's way more decorative. And I've got another one like it on the, uh, the L part. That must have been one heck of a snowstorm. You're talking about snow. I mean, it's covering the side of the house. It's like, like a snowblower hit it or something. There we go. There's a nice 
uh, view from the street. You see that on the back part there that they moved the door so it's no longer there. Instead, I have two windows. But the, uh, the steps that they used to have is still there. Just now it's got a tree growing up through it. <clears throat> There's a view of this, the whole subdivision really, uh, all the houses that were really close to each other. And you see how they're very similar. Like the, uh, the corbels are very, very similar to each other. The only difference is that this house has more decorative features. Yeah, it's just a little bit grander, a lot taller. So definitely the owner of the subdivision's place. This is from the bell tower of the old school that was here on Taunton Drive looking down. Uh, you can see our house kind of almost right smack in the middle. And you see there's no trees <laughs> or barely any trees. Uh, you could see um, Cadillac Mountain and Skudik Mountain from uh, the second story of this house. Here's a, uh, you know, the winter time of the, the same time. Marley, cut it out. <laughs> There's Mrs. Goodwin sitting on the hill. He loved her little feather hat, but um, if we were able to, probably can on this, but if you were able to zoom in, you could see some of the cool uh, decorative detail on that porch. And I did find the original corbels up in the attic. So we're gonna get those replicated and put on. But notice she's sitting about where that bump out is. And yeah, so that was definitely a, a later add on from this picture. That's my parlor. Uh, I wish that when they took these pictures, they could have like inscribed a year on there, but it was pre-electricity. Uh, you see the gas parlor lamp hanging in the middle. And uh, when I did renovation and I was scraping off uh, layers and layers of wallpaper and old paneling, I did find that exact wallpaper. There is my parlor on the left and my dining room on the right. On the left, that was a really cool find with Gary. We we're going through the pictures. I was like, stop, nope, I know that. That's my living room. <laughs> And uh, I did find the outline to that, um, that mantle, which I wish they had never removed, uh, did find an outline of it and traced it out and vowed that I would somehow recreate that. And the idea is to take this old pump organ that I found and use it to recreate the mantle. The, uh, the wood stove on the right uh, would be in my, my dining room and that hole uh, we had to patch up. It was underneath the wallpaper, but the hole where that stove pipe went through was still there and we had to uh, patch that up. So really cool find to see these pictures. Uh, I didn't realize that there would be any because my last house didn't have any pictures. So it was really, really fun going through this with Gary and finding these pictures. That's my dining room. Uh, and uh, Mr. Goodwin sitting at the table. I don't know if that's his wife behind there. I'm assuming so. And uh, yeah, that was really cool. And I knew that it was my dining room because unlike the bump out in the, in the parlor, it comes down just a little bit. You can see up towards the ceiling how it comes down a little bit. And I was wondering if that was an original feature of this house or if it was added when they kept lowering the ceiling for some reason. And uh, this picture lets me know that that was original, that it came down just a little bit.
this is what the house looked like when I saw it. You see, it was very overgrown. Uh, this is in the fall time, so you know all the grass is just falling over and dead. The the roof was in horrible shape, and uh, though obviously the masonry done around was done around the uh, the retaining wall here was in horrible horrible shape. You'd see there that it was starting to starting to crumble. And then foster kids thought it would be a good idea to kick it all down. <laughs> see here, that rose bush had gotten so big that you couldn't walk the path between the house and the rose bush. It was just horrible. I'm so glad that those are gone. This was the uh the kitchen to the right was the main part of the kitchen, uh, which is now my butler's pantry. And the left was just a room with a refrigerator in it. it you know, there were no cabinets, there, were, there wasn't anything, just refrigerator. And, you know, you can see the original potato box to the left of the, uh, the fake brick chimney. Turns out there was real brick behind there. So why the fake brick? I don't know. <laughs> This was the dining room that we saw the picture of. You see how the ceiling comes down just a little bit. Uh, lovely red carpet, horrible wallpaper, barn board, and then you know a ceiling on top of a ceiling. And then uh, on the other side, you see that the house was full of all kinds of stuff and definitely stuck somewhere between the 70s and 80s. And this Shag carpeting going up the stairs, which had a million staples in it. <laughs> it was, oh, it was stinky and moldy, and it took a lot of work to get rid of that. But you see, the woodwork was just amazing in this house. Now, I took down the wall between the parlor and the stairs, um, and if you look down at the floor on the right hand side, you see that there was what looked like thin strip hardwood, which didn't make a lot of sense to me given the, the period of the house. And it was very wavy. And when I ripped it out, it was only like a, a quarter inch thick. And I was like, there's no way that's, that's original. However, it did have his signature on it. So I don't know if this was a, a remodel in the twenties. Does anybody know when they would have gone with that very thin veneer? Uh, the, the best I can say is uh, it, it's unusual that it's that thin and it might be that it was refinished a lot, standard thinner, you know? Could be. It was in the, uh, it was in that hall. It was in, it's still in my living room and it was in the bathroom, but they used real floor in the kitchen and the dining room. Yeah. Hey, Norm. Yeah. Was it tongue and groove? Nailed yeah. on the side like a normal hardwood floor would be installed, or yep, sure was. Okay, with huh. uh, like a thousand nails, right? <laughs> well, uh, and I tried not... to do research, but I couldn't find anything on it just when hardwood <laughs> floors were popular. And I was like, no, I want to know about this thin floor. <laughs> well, I think Les may have some of it if they refinished it a lot, but usually. You can't get too far down into it before you start hitting nail heads. Mm -hmm. That's exactly it. Oh, hey, I actually can show you what it looks like because I got it on my wood pile here. So this is the uh, the flooring. It's really super thin it's like a light maple color it looks to be about a half an inch maybe five eighths so anybody i i guess it could have been sanded down a lot but this just seems super thin 
No, I, I think it was then because if you notice uh, the, uh, on the groove, the groove top, groove bottom is about the same width. And if it had been sanded down a lot, the groove on the top and the tongue on the top, well, that one, now it still wasn't done that much. You look at it, there's not that much difference. Yeah, it's uh, almost center. Almost, not quite. So maybe you can say an eighth of an inch, but that's it. Les, have you ever seen that used, not as flooring, but maybe uh, for wainscoting or something like that, where you would want a thinner board than, than a traditional floor? I, I've, I've seen some vertical wainscot sort of like that in kitchens, but mostly it was beadboard. It wasn't right. just, you know? Right. Yeah, this is what was in that kitchen, like a, you know, a thicker, much thicker, yeah, yeah. Yep. I, I thought it interesting because I thought, you know, maybe it was like during wartime or something, they were trying to save on wood. You know, yep. he did. But usually, uh, usually you can tell when a floor has been changed because you'll see it on the baseboards and you'll see it on the thresholds because I'll have to change those too. Mm. Yeah, and it was odd that in the, the hallway here, it ran the lengthwise instead of widthwise, like the living room. That, that like probably, a bowling alley. Probably has something to do with the framing underneath. In other words, in the old days, they wanted uh, all the framing to go at right angles to the floor joists. So if the floor joists in the hallway uh, went uh, crossways rather than lengthwise, then the, that, that would happen. If, this, if uh, this is what was under it. Yeah, if the subfloor, I mean, if the flooring butted to the baseboard, probably later. If it went under the baseboard, probably earlier. Yeah, it butted too. Yeah. And then the old stuff went under. Yeah. The other possibility is in your age house, sometimes what they did is in the front hall, they didn't have hard, they didn't have floor at all or floor to speak of. They had junky fur because they planned it to be carpeted. You'll see the same thing in some houses of your period where the, uh, if you go into the parlor, you'll see the flooring around the edges is really nice and there's junky spruce in the middle. And that's because it was planned for carpet. Yeah, the in the old picture, there was wall to wall carpet. Yeah, see the same thing on staircases. I've seen staircases that are junky wood and it's because they were planned for carpeting. Wow. So even in uh, this time frame, that would have been carpeted on the stairs. It could be, yes. And, and what, uh, the other thing that was fascinating, and this is this is I've seen this in Thomaston, is it was designed for carpeting, but it hadn't had it for a long time because the staircase curved. And back when people were cheap, having curved carpets was easy. But once people got more expensive, you couldn't afford the carpeting. But then today, because of computers, you can afford it again. You know. Mm. Wow. Very cool. So we started work on the, the porch trying to restore it and of course put up my uh, my porch swing yep. and ran into all kinds of rot. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it looks like they definitely resheathed the roof like probably in 2000 when she had the roof done and everything. They replaced a lot of boards, but they left a lot of boards that just continued to rot. And so there was a huge dip here and we got that all jacked up. We got everything, you know, so that it's solid, but- Warren, did you figure out the source of the moisture? Yeah, yeah. When um, this, uh, this corner here, was down like five inches. So the gutters just poured all the water into here. 
Yep. And then also in the corner, you know, water just kept running down and just yep. rotting, rotting, yep. rotting. Yep. So it sat vacant for 20 years. So, you know, water will do its thing in that time. Yep. So uh, back to the, uh, the slides here. That's, uh, that's the way I found my master bedroom. It was, uh, you know, all kinds of funky wallpaper and the uh, sheetrock was put up uh, in 2000 when she had the house redone and the electrician fell through the ceiling. <laughs> so she, she made them sheetrock it. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, what you've got to watch out for is sometimes people will take off all the plaster and then they'll take off all the lath and then they'll try to put up sheetrock and they'll find that the old studding doesn't go 16 on center. Right. And so what they have to do is strap it up again just to get uh, sheetrock on it. And mm. uh, often not a good idea. Yeah, yeah, this one, they just, uh, they kind of went over the, the plaster and everything. I guess they must, must have yeah. you know, cleaned around the hole and then just did the whole ceiling and sheetrock yeah yeah and that's you know if you're going to change things you don't look at the ceilings anyway so why not change the ceilings and pay attention to the walls mm -hmm. and make sure the floors are flat enough so you don't trip over them right yeah that was one impressive thing like you said in 2000 when she had everything done and then just abandoned the place they had put um uh, solid plywood on the roof and she'd replaced all the windows with new windows yeah so it really saved the house i mean for 20 years you know a lot of damage could be done but in this house remarkably the floors are pretty level upstairs we do have a dip but um you know that kind of maintenance did wonders for this house now it's just going behind them and redoing it yeah yeah but we finally good. got the uh the dip mostly out and we've got it all secure so i'll be rocking on the the porch swing with my coffee <laughs> the uh the left is my bedroom the right is the way the the old blue room was and it looked to the pass-through room that every old farmhouse around here has where yep. you have to walk through one bedroom to get to another yep the uh, blue shag carpeting, that cool marble texture that was in the pass-through room, which had a closet. All the bedrooms in this house have closets, which is pretty amazing to me. I hadn't seen that in a lot of old houses. Usually the, the main front bedroom, the master bedroom had a closet, but the rest never did. So this is the first house that I've owned that all the bedrooms have closets. Norm? I suspect yeah. your this house is a little newer than your other houses. Mm -hmm. And if so, what happened uh, before 1800, all, uh, all cloth was hand woven. And then they started introducing machine weaving. And once they started introducing machine weaving, uh, clothes became cheaper. And so people had more clothes. And so they needed more closets. Uh, in the old days, only the rich people had a lot of clothes. You had two changes of clothes. That's it, you know. Mm -hmm. So you only had one hang up. <laughs> and I'll also add that it was a woman who owned the property. And so she was the one who hired the construction yep. people, right? So she yep. probably wanted closets for her clothes. Yeah, she was very women have gone. more clothes than men. Have her signature. So, um, so that's the uh, the end room where that chest is is where the stairs used to come up that was capped off so that it could be a full bedroom size uh, yeah. if it's a clean size bed a little fireplace and stuff as we'll see when we do the walk around um, but even that room had a closet <laughs> yeah. what I'll do sometimes Norm is I'll open those staircases up because then you don't have a, a walk through bedroom. You can come up the back stairs to one bedroom and then come up the front stairs to the other. Uh, but yeah. they're pretty steep, so you gotta be careful. 
Yes, yes, yeah. And uh, we solved the problem of the pass through with a wall. We've now got a hall. <laughs> oh, good. That's what uh, my parlor looks like. Um, the original medallion uh, is still there. And yep. uh, those windows, it, you know, is what everybody comments on when they drive by, yep. you know, how beautiful they are. And it's kind of what drew me to the house first. That's the upstairs bathroom. Once again, very 70s. We got the fake tile, you know, we've got the fake linoleum. It's very ugly. Yeah. <laughs> We're We've got it painted out. We got rid of the fake tile, but a lot of that, like the floor is still there. That carpet, thankfully, is gone. Yeah. Sometimes the two places that you'll get the most rot in the bathrooms is under the toilet. And that's because the tanks aren't insulated. And so you get right. sweating off the tank. And the other thing they'll do is they'll lay the tub. Uh, they'll butt the, the flooring up to the tub. So any water that comes out of the tub goes right down to the subfloor and rots things out. So if you can cover mm -hmm. those places, generally yeah. you're in good shape. Yeah, I, I noticed that around the toilet, uh, there was patchwork. So yeah. either it did rot or when they put the toilet in, they made a bigger mess than they needed to. <laughs> yeah, the insulated tanks, they put insulation on the inside of those tanks now, solves the problem. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. That's the uh, upstairs hall, um, and most of that. I I was very surprised by the width of the hall. Um, the house next door, with a very similar floor print, had a much narrower hall. So yeah. it's kind of nice that this hall is wide enough that you can have bookcases there. Yeah. The flower power room. <laughs> That was definitely more of a 60s, 70s than an 80s thing. Yeah. Did you have to redo the wiring? No, she had that all completed in 2000 as well. Because when yeah. I see a hanging lamp like that, that's a dead giveaway that you still have some knob and tube hiding in the walls. So then I go to the light switches, see if they're hard clicks. And if they're yeah. hard off click on, it's uh, it's old wiring that needs fixing. Yeah, all of the, uh, it used to have knob and tubing throughout. All of that was removed. Um, I wish I could find some of those click switches you're talking about. Those are so cool. Um, yeah. But she had it all done in metal clad wiring because she was afraid okay. that mom was going to be in the house and it get burned down because a squirrel ate the wiring yeah. or something. So it's all done in metal clad except for the stuff that I've added when I remodeled the kitchen and stuff? Two, two things to know, and that is that the modern Romex plastic cable is treated so the uh, varmints won't eat it. And then the second thing is, while I don't make, think they make those hard click switches, they do make UL push button switches. That would be, that would definitely be a cool thing to add. I, I always like the the little round buttons, the click, yep. click. <laughs> yeah, the round buttons you can get, go online and you can order them and they're code. Nice, I'm gonna have to look into that. Yeah, another way to spend money. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, no, owning an old house is not cheap. No. And that's the uh, the downstairs bathroom before the remodel. You see, it's got that thin flooring on it. it yep. had a closet. There wasn't any place to do laundry, so I've turned that into my laundry room. Yep. And then very nautical. Why are bathrooms always nautical? I don't know. But <laughs> there's a lot ships, of water there. Ships and seashells. I mean, <laughs> one thing that I when I'm doing a house for somebody. I'm asking them how long they plan to live there. Because if this is, this is their final home and they're gonna live there for decades, then making really good investments makes sense. But if they're gonna be gone in 10 years, uh, then you probably wanna think about it differently. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good point. Yeah, I plan on staying here until I can't go up the stairs anymore. <laughs> you can't go up those stairs right now. <laughs> 
Yeah, this uh, to the left is that that stairway that you know has been capped off, and uh, the little mudroom that I'm in right now, yep. looking towards the stairs. So, I do plan on taking that out and that becoming a coat closet, and then more room in my pantry. Yeah. So you took my advice on that one, huh? That that's the plan. Yeah, that's what we talked about last week, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then uh, that's a picture of my favorite window in the house because it lets in so much natural light into the stairwell. Yep. Our old house didn't have a window like that. It just had the curved roof because it was a smaller house, you know, and it was always so dark on the stairs. Yep. Eventually, well, I plan on putting a chandelier there too so it can be seen from the outside and yep. just add some light at night. One of the things that happened is lighting devices in the 19th century weren't so good. So windows, natural light became much more important. And you would, your best parlor would tend to be on the Southwest side if they could. So when they finished a day's work and sat, they'd have light and heat. Mm. Yeah, it makes sense. That's, I think why the, the bump out in the, the dining room is you know, in the morning, I've got sun coming in through the, the bay window in the parlor. And then afternoon, I have natural light and heat coming in from the bay window on the other side of the house. Yeah. And then kitchens tended to be on the east side or northeast side if they could do it. So you'd get morning sun and it would be cooler because one of the, one of the uh, other than childbirth, one of the ways women died was heat prostration. Uh, working oh. over hot stoves in July and August, or, or hot fires, really. Yeah, Gary, do you know when electricity came to Sullivan? Hasn't in some cases. Right. <laughs> Depends on which end you were on. I believe there, uh, there was power in East Sullivan before there was, before the bridge was built, up in, in count because that comes in across the bridge from Hancock. Now, um, I may be wrong about that. I, I really haven't had an opportunity to, but I know that some of our old photographs that from down this way show light poles. Yeah, that's why I was before, asking. Before up that way. So, and I'm guessing that. The power probably, okay, I think the, the singing bridge went in, which was the first the 20s, right? bridge that lasted very long. I think that was 1926. Mm -hmm. So if it came in before that, it probably came down from Franklin, either down Burt Gray Road, probably down the Burt Gray Road, and then spread from there through Sullivan Harbor. But I'm pretty sure that uh, I was on this end of town, came in from Goldsboro, because really the system is still set up that way. Uh, you folks lose your power, we probably got it. We lose yeah. the power, uh, you probably still got yours. There seems to be a, a connection right about the Tunk Lake Road. Uh, you know, they try to grid it and and that grid seems to be there. Mm -hmm. so I, I really don't know, but we should look at some of those old pictures again. Now, yes. the majority of the pictures that you and I looked at, the ones that A.W. Gordon took, were probably taken between 1890 and 1910 or 15. Uh, some of them even when he was a boy. And, and uh, I've, I've tried to figure out looking at when he was there and uh, then he became an educator, but he also sold some of his photographs to the Eastern Publishing. So some of the Eastern Publishing photographs that are on postcards are his work. And wow. we, ha and we have uh, corresponding, uh, some of our negatives are corresponding shots. And I think what it was is he would take two or three shots, 
and send them the best one and keep the other ones. And that's what we ended up with 100 years later. Mm. Gary, on yep. the electricity, the other thing that happened is you look for the source of the power, which was back in the beginning was water power. Right. So where where'd they have a little hydro operation? The, the poles went out from there. And the interesting thing is because the land was open, sometimes they went right across the fields. And now, of course, it's all grown up. And so mm -hmm. the lines have been moved to the roads. Hmm. Right. And I have no idea. I know where there were lumber mills and grist mills, but I, I have... I, I have we have I have seen nothing in that collection that indicated where there might have been a power station. Yeah, had to be something because it yeah didn't come down from Bangor Hydro. I guarantee it. No. Mm -hmm. No. Yep. And the early early power started off as DC with those little power stations that you're talking about. Yeah. But yeah, I noticed some of the pictures of like Robertson store. There were light posts, and I was like, well, that's interesting. It may have been that the earliest power was on streams uh, to help feed uh, uh, an adjacent mill or closer to a quarry so that they could have electricity to run some of their quarry material after it became more prevalent. That's just a guess. Yeah. If you look for it, it would be a it would be a concrete dam that they're running off of. I pretty much guarantee that. There aren't many of those in Sullivan. <laughs> no, they got washed out probably. Probably last way. Mm. A lot of so, rock ones. Yep. So there's the uh, the porch pre-ripping into it. <laughs> you see that a lot of shingle, a lot of wood, um, zero flashing. So. Yep. That's been fun. And then next. All right. So I guess now we just do the walkthrough of the house as it is now. Yep. So this is my kitchen. You see, I took down the wall that separated the dining room and the kitchen. And you see, these floors are real. They're you know, the thicker, darker wood. Yeah. And here's the bay window that was in the shot. Mr. Goodwin was probably somewhere in between my island and that row of cabinets there. And then the old stove sat where my buffet is. Yeah. And the mirror is where the stove pipe went through. Yeah. Of course, these you know, this day and age, your kitchen is the most important room of the house. It's where everybody likes to gather, all of your guests. So the old kitchen just wouldn't cut it. <laughs> we couldn't fit more than four people in here. So this has become my pantry, my messy pantry. And I've started removing some of the paint off the, the original cabinet doors here. And yeah, I discovered- You know what the easiest way to get paint off of doors? The, the works fairly well. You take those doors off, you put them outside where the, they'll go through a freeze thaw cycle, the sun will shine on them, the eaves will drip on them, and usually interior paint will come off pretty fast. Yeah, I, I was using a, a heat gun and a scraper. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, and I that carbine. really bad smell. Yeah. But the uh, detail on this stuff that was under all that paint is just pretty amazing. Yep. And I discovered that this door here didn't originally belong there because you can see the hardware notch yep. there. Yep. So that must've been one of the bottom cabinets when they removed those, they yep. put the door up there. But you see, it's got all the, the trim up there. It's the only set of original cabinets I have. Yep. The rest are all you know, this side here, probably 50s, 60s. There's the old cabinetry almost certainly has lead paint, which you oh, yeah, want to positive for. of it. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, don't look for it, but that's probably there. The other thing is that your 
what is what was your old kitchen was probably originally a pantry and your kitchen was probably where it is now and and then they switched it around and moved the kitchen into the pantry yeah i think you're right so you can see these uh circular marks here yep. under where i yep. have the stove next yep. to the chimney so i'm assuming that's must have been where the cook stove sat yep exactly for many many years the joke is you can always tell where the old kitchen is because that's the room with the most doors and yeah what, Two, the old three, kitchen, four. you know there's a staircase down staircase up there were a couple of pantries and a door out to the hall or a door out to the dining room, door outside. Mm -hmm. You can usually have six, seven doors in the kitchen. And you do. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but with the uh, the wall down and joining the two spaces, it just made it way more functional. Yep. Um, we took down several layers of ceiling and created, you know, this tin look ceiling. Yep. Um, wouldn't have been common in the 1890s. It's more of like a later thing, but I really love the look of them. Yeah, there's some early tin ceilings. I've seen them in houses. And in terms of taking the wall down, the only concern is that some of those interior walls on houses are load bearing. So it, don't take it down casually. Make sure yeah. that it's not supporting weight. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Because uh, you know, all of the joists in the floor were running parallel with the um, with that wall, and yep. the above wall isn't sitting on it either. So yep. I was fairly confident that it wasn't. Good. And this is the bathroom, the downstairs bathroom, no longer nautical themed. <laughs> uh, tried to go with like Victorian hotel themed. Yep. My Victorian sink and the Victoria mirror. And uh, this was my own creation. And I got <laughs> it to work. And uh, yeah. even the, uh, the clay on the bottom, that's all of us sculpting flowers and stuff. <laughs> one, one thing you might consider is, is in your uh, clothes washing machine, if you can put a pan under it with a direct drain to the cellar, so when mm -hmm. the thing overflows, which it's going to, it won't go splash across the floor, it'll just go down in the concrete. That's what I did too. We, uh, I found this, had to have it, so I put it up in the bathroom. Yep. <laughs> Washboard. And of course I had to move the toilet because it was right in front of the door and I replaced it with the clawfoot tub something I thought would just be a lot prettier to look at from the dining room. Yep. And I took out the, that thin flooring and exposed the, um, the plank flooring that was here. Yep. You also, and, whenever I'm designing, you've done it. I like to put toilets behind doors, you know? Yep. <laughs> that way you don't have to look at it. And if somebody barges in, they're not gonna see you. And, and if you had a functional tub, I'd like uh, something waterproof underneath it. So when the kids splash on the floor, it doesn't drip on the ceiling, down the ceiling on the kitchen table. This is my- But look at how good those kids are. Yeah. They wouldn't splash on the floor. Look at them. Yeah. <laughs> You're being set up. Yeah, I know. They're making it seem like I'm crazy, but- <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hello. Gary, was the living room floor and the hallway floor with the with the strip floor off? It looks like it was all the same level. It's not quite like you can see the. Uh, okay, yeah, yep. This, it's on top and it's so thin. Yep. But yep. I put the strip and I've got another strip that will go on top of it to kind of make yep. this look like it's carpeting or something. Yep. Um, because I don't want to take out that many nails again. <laughs> the uh, staircase we exposed that from the living room here so you know you can see just how pretty it is yeah and and no good deed goes unpunished so the downside is that heat, heat will rise upstairs and can't be kept downstairs yes and, and 
also, if you ever had a fire downstairs, the smoke from it is upstairs before you know it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, definitely on that heat thing, we always make sure to turn down the thermostat before, uh, you know, like an hour before going to bed, yeah. because it will get really warm up here, even with this thermostat off. Yeah. You know, the other thing I like to do, because I'm a retired, a former fireman, is shut doors. If you ever do have a fire and the doors are shut, then the fire can't spread so fast. Hmm. I remember that in school drills. Yep, same thing. And you can tell, always construction, always stuff going on. Yep. Um, this is the hallway, this is where we have that little dip, it's over here in this corner. You can see it's made the door frame a little cattywampus, a little Beetlejuice looking. And, and what I'll do with, uh, if I have a door like that, uh, I'll look at the uh, plaster or the, uh, or the wallpaper above it. And if the plaster isn't cracked or the wallpaper isn't torn, my strong suspicion is it was, it dropped a very long time ago. And then the next thing I'll look at is, does the door open and close? And if the door opens and closes, and there's no indication of, uh, of plaster or, or wallpaper tear, then I'll just leave it alone. Heck with it. Yeah, we've now got it so it will open and close. And we did that just by adjusting the hinges just a little bit. OK, good. Yep. And we were able to get the, the door to open and close, which uh, Isaiah really appreciates being able to have his room closed. Yep. This is the flower power room. And the boy told me he cleaned his room and we can see he did an amazing job. Yep. <laughs> Why well, one of my one of my one of my kids was in school, his dorm counselor said, you know, his room is really clean if you understand all the clothes on the floor are clean. Right. <laughs> I think that's his logic too. Yeah, yeah. So there we have our the master bedroom, that one with the funky wall. I'm not sure how my boys ever knew what was. Well, uh, they define clean differently. Let's sit, put it that way. So, and this is the, uh, I love this stuff. This is the Congolian flooring. Yep. Uh, Brad wanted me to rip it out. And I was like, it's been here a long time. We're keeping it. Yep. <laughs> but the. Uh, decide to remove it, what you'll find is the floor is unpainted uh, in the middle and is I only bet, painted yeah. around the edges. Yep, I bet you're right. And th that door has grain graining on it or varnish yeah. on it. Yeah, nicely done. It is so pretty. Yep. And I don't know why this room, they decided to keep all the woodwork exposed and the rest of the house, it was all painted. Yeah, but I'm glad they did. I, it, with the gray that we chose and everything, it kind of gives it a good masculine, you know, like a cigar lounge feel. Yeah, uh, and and before you, if you've got woodwork that's, uh, you know, naturally colored, you know, uh, nat uh, you know, unpainted, think long and hard before you paint it because it is really difficult to paint take paint off once you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I hate the idea of painting natural wood. Yep. Uh, see, and this hall too, this is the other spot where it has that very thin flooring. It looks like they put like, right, on it and it's worn through. Like right here at the top of the stairs, yep. you can see it just sits on top of the existing floor. Yep. And Butts up to it. So you're saying that that's a sign that this, like I thought, is not original. It was added later. Yeah, it, it is usually the case. In other words, a carpenter is usually they lay down uh, the subfloor goes under everything, including the uh, uh, stud wall partitions. And then uh, the wall itself is uh, is plastered. Then the uh, depending on the period, then the finished floor goes down and then the uh, baseboard uh, goes on top of the finished floor and into the wall. 
And it's just because that way there's less, uh, there's less coping and cutting. It just, it's sort of, you know, it's easier to do basically. It's mm -hmm. like the little uh, square medallions in the corner are a way a carpenter can cheap. It's cheat. It's a lot easier to do that than an old mitered corner. Yes, yes, I love those cheater boxes. <laughs> the uh, and you can see that it it, it waves. Yeah, so kind of buckles up a little bit right there. A couple yep. places. Does is that. it nailed? If if it is it nailed down or is it just laid down? It is nailed down a lot. They use like thousands of nails. Okay, if, if you pull this floor up, when you pull the nails out, try to pull them out, they're toenailed in. So pull them yep. out straight. If you pull them out straight, you won't shatter the wood underneath and you'll have a pretty nice floor. If you just mm -hmm. yank at them, you'll trash the floor underneath and you can't sand through all the damage you've done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of did that in the bathroom. There are spots where it's kind of pitted because yep. of the but this is the uh, the new hallway. Yep. Electric to finish, but yep. here it is. And it still left plenty of room for the boys' bedroom in here. Yep. And, and with uh, with your uh, um, foster kids, you having any trouble with the state and and the specifications of the building? Yeah, I needed to have this hallway. Yeah, in order for them to consider this a bedroom. Okay, so no that's the only thing we need out. to do. Yep. So it, you know, it, I like the function of it. Yeah. Um, it kind of hurt my heart to do it though, because yep. like things original. <laughs> yep. But then this is that back room where the stairs would have come up. Yep. You see, there's plenty of room here for her queen size bed. Yep. On this side, you know, she's got her TV and fireplace and her refrigerator. Yep. And the ceiling height is actually really good up here. Um, you know, we're still looking at like eight, nine foot ceilings, but it feels so much lower as we talked about last time because the windows are yep. so close to the ground. Yeah. And we discovered last time that that's because of the cornices that they put. Are so decorative that you know uh, function over form, I guess, yeah. or form over function. And I've seen, I've seen uh, other houses, early houses, where they dropped the windows just because that was the style in the Victorian era. And when mm -hmm. people raise them again, because the sun comes from above, not below. You know. Oh wow! So they they actually lowered the windows just for style, and then somebody. Oh, yeah. Put it back. Oh, yeah. oh, that's too cool. Yeah, yeah. We just we're doing a house in uh, in Falmouth on the Buttonham Tavern, which is off Buttonham Road, oldest house in town. And in the in the Greek Revival to Victorian era, they lowered every single one of those windows. So if you uh, uh, you could have uh, kicked kicked the lower glass out without lift, lifting your foot too much off the floor. And mm. the problem is. It's dangerous, you know. Glass yeah. down low is dangerous. Easy to fall for, particularly for kids to fall through. Mm -hmm. Yep. Are you going to take the vinyl siding off? Let's see. And here we have the original vinyl siding. I mean, the original <laughs> yeah. siding. Uh, it's still all under there. It still seems to be in the various places I've done this. To be in really good shape. Yeah, but you can. You saw all that crackling paint, and, yes. and that's that's probably why they did it. Is scraping it and painting it was going to be expensive. Uh, some of this, go back to that lower vinyl siding. It's melted off. What happened? It is. In several places, um, it did this around the house. If the sun was bouncing off yep. uh, the corner here, it yep. was melting there. Um, the old sink drain pipe sticks out yep. of the ground and the sun hits that, heats it up, and it melted the vinyl siding beside that. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you can tell when there's been a fire in a house like this because all the uh, vinyl siding just melts right off. You see the uh, amazing detail around the window that yep. right now is just hidden because it's all yucky brown. Yep. 
And, and when you, uh, we had this discussion before, but if you take the vinyl siding off, take it off piece by piece and don't try, if, if the paint is solid, try to leave it on and just scrape and, and touch up where the paint's bad. Uh, mm -hmm. paint a big house like yours is, you can easily spend tens of thousands of dollars for a professional job. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. I would think, you know, it would be comparable to what we've spent at the shop, which is close to 30,000. Yep, that's right. And then uh, this is the stairs leading up to the attic. Use that term loosely, as you can tell that it's very small treads and very, very steep. So almost kind of like a ladder. And as we talked about last time, I would like to get these pushed back so they're a little bit bigger and probably take your suggestion of putting a landing up here so we can pivot it and get up to where we added this dormer. Yep. And we'd like to put bedrooms up here. The issue is getting insulation in, you know, there's not much wrong. These are the uh, original remnants of the, the original porch corbels. And then the, uh, let's see if I can find them. Let's see. And then, right, right here the, yeah. is nice. the uh, original, I don't know what they're called, but the, the railings that went on top of the porch. Yeah. And uh, I think those are super cool. And it'd be something I'd be interested in learning how to put back on the, the porch and over the bay window. I, I'm sure you've got somebody who's nearby who can do the turning for you. That would be like super cool to find somebody that can do the turning. I know a guy that can help me with, uh, you know, the corbels, getting yep. those turned out, you know, with the scroll saw and stuff. But yep. I, he may have... Um, you know, whatever they call that, the Turner thing. <laughs> yeah. The, but, the, the issue is, is only that there's not that much work for a guy who does turnings, but usually there's somebody around who can do it. Like somebody that will do it as a hobby versus a... Yeah, or somebody who's retired or somebody who's, who's got a, a staircase business, you know, because that's where you see them, is custom staircases. Uh for newel posts and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and, and I, I knew a guy who used to ship them out to New York City, you know, make them up here, ship them down there. He had a pretty good business. That's You're cool. some railings on the side of that stair. Yep, <laughs> it's like straight down. Yeah, and as we said before, there are ways to make a staircase like this functional. The, at the top, uh, there could be a square landing that's a step down from the level of the floor, so you gain nine inches. And then as you come out into the hallway downstairs, uh, if you ever noticed, you can't put your feet right against the wall uh, because it'll put you off balance. So that bottom stair can intrude in the hallway and you'll uh -huh. never knock into it. You can probably gain a step there too those two things uh then you probably have a staircase that's close to code oh that'd be super cool and you see go down to the bottom of that doorway you see the doorway to the hall there has got a is is out uh almost a full step already so if the step went out that far it doesn't even go intrude on the door uh, going into the next room or into the hallway it's just easy peasy yeah and then we're gonna like take this wall here, if we can, and bring it out on this side of it. Yep. So Hi. you can, you know, come in the hallway and then shoop, up the stairs. Yep. So you have some privacy. Yep. Good yep. idea. But then the only downfall is we do that and we'll have like eight more foster kids. <laughs> no, actually you're gonna have a problem with the foster kids up in the attic because they're gonna want two means of egress. And unless you can figure out a way to do egress windows up there, 
uh, d doesn't qualify for uh, as bedrooms. That, that's a study, and and I don't think uh, DHS will allow you to have kids up there. Yeah, I think we want to turn that into our master suite up there, and yep. then this room here would probably get divided in the two yep. rooms. That makes sense. Get some uh, if you don't have them already. That smoke detector should be hard hardwired. Yep, should be. That one's not. <laughs> yep. And get them on all the all the escape routes. So if there's a problem, kids can get out. Mm -hmm. And we're back to the kitchen. Yeah. That's my house. Except for the cellar. Oh yeah, we didn't do the cellar. Are the is the heat you've got ducting in the floor? Was there warm air heat in the house? Yeah, this house has had every form of heat yep. in it over its lifetime. It had wood stove, coal stove, forced hot air, and now it's got uh, baseboard heating, which is definitely not my favorite. Yeah, if you if you wanted to spend the money, uh, you know my preferred solution at the moment is. Uh, is having a uh, warm air heat with ducts so I can put a oh. heat pump on it and uh, have air conditioning too. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And I like warm air better than uh, the hot water thing. Here's my, uh, my, my box here. You see all the metal clad yep. wiring that's coming out of it. Is the, are those big wide uh, field stones on the floor? It's uh, pieces of the old, um, there was a, a barn outside that was yeah. torn down years and years ago. And this is part of the flooring, so. Yeah. And then some, of course, the, uh, the granite that yeah. is. You, you can have the barn, barn uh, uh, cement. I'll take those pieces of granite off your hands and the <laughs> posts while I'm at it. Yeah, these, these are amazing posts. Aren't they? And this is our workshop down here. Yeah. <laughs> Keep the, uh, you know, the sawdust at a minimum when it's cold yep. outside. Yeah. That goes to that chimney that's no longer used. Yeah. You probably should insulate all those pipes uh, so the warm air stays or the hot water stays hot, the cold water stays cold, and uh, for the baseboard heat, it's warmer upstairs than down. That's the old uh, cistern, or at least part of it. Yeah, and I, it's really too bad that they knocked it down, but when they put in that bathroom, yep. they rooted plumbing, so they knocked down the cistern. Yep. But that was a very exciting find to see that at least parts of it is still here. And yep. when I bring people down, they're like, what is that? Why do you have that there? And I was like, that's how they used to have water in their house. Yeah, how, how the systems work generally is they, they had gutters, the water came off the roof and down into the cistern. And usually they had diverters. So the first wash off the roofs didn't go into the cistern it all, and took all the junk and went outside. And then they diverted it down into the cistern. And then they like had a hand pump that would take it up to the first floor. It looks like this cistern had a wall in it. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Usually, usually they did not have walls in them, but you know it may have been that they didn't weren't getting enough water, so they partitioned off the uh, cistern because a hand pump needs a certain depth of water to uh, for draw. Uh, mm. and that's all I can think. Mm. But it's absolutely typical. Do you see? You have an outside foundation wall, and then just inside it, you have the cistern wall. That's just, that's a dead giveaway that it's a cistern. Mm -hmm. No reason for two walls otherwise. Nope. And I have no idea what this block is for. But I've got a big concrete block here. Sometimes uh, they had, uh, let's say, an old uh, uh, electric jet pump sat on something like that. But I don't see any plumbing around it, so that's probably a bad answer. The uh, 
the uh, lally columns you have are, are not code lally columns. Uh, nobody will know <laughs> <Like> that. that? <laughs> you know, the lally columns, the new one you've got there, uh -huh. uh, the walls on it aren't, well, actually, those look pretty good. The walls on that one are thicker than normal. And the mm -hmm. issue is, uh, according to code, these are supposed to take a certain amount of heat and not uh, melt and deflect. And in fact, it's dumb because by the time you've got that much heat in the cellar, your house is burned down. So yeah, it's burned down anyway. Yeah, but exactly. yeah, we had to we had to put this up because in their infinite wisdom, when they put in this uh, system here, they cut out all of the joists. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so there was a lot of bounce. Yep. So had to come up with a way to stop the bouncing. Yep. And, and then and, this is where the old, uh, the big central air. Yeah, floor furnace, yeah. Uh -huh. uh, the, one of the issues is that very few tradespeople, be they guys putting in heat, heat, plumbing, electricity, have any respect for anything but their trade. So they'll just mm -hmm. mess the world up around them to get their thing right. And yeah, so, when you know, I worked as an electrician, we hated plumbers. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> I mean, the plumbers all use Milwaukee tools, right? Right. Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing, before we would jack a floor up, what we would do is we would bring down, yeah, there you go. Uh, we'd bring down our, our transit or our, uh, or our builder's level, laser level, and figure out what, where were the low points in the floor and try to level the floor out. And then we'd go upstairs. And if the low point downstairs corresponded with a low point on the second floor, we knew we had something we needed to do. I have to do that. Mm. Really? It's some sort of post exactly. or something. It's pretty square. Yeah. But the second floor, I think it dropped down. Oh, and on top of those granite posts, you see how there's a little cushion of wood? Mm -hmm. Off what'll happen is it'll, What'll happen is that cushion of wood will uh, crunch and that'll cause the floor to, to lower. And all you need to do is jack it up a little bit, uh, put a piece of new oak in there and you're fine as can be. You can, uh, you can date the granite by how it's split apart. What you're seeing on this granite is is uh, cylinders cut in half, and that's the drill mark. Uh, you can see that right there. On the earlier stuff, it would be a V-shaped wedge, and they literally wedged it apart. So that's mm. uh, the stones you're looking at after about 1825 or 1830. Yep, you see it down here too. Yep, exactly. If I was, I was seeing a wedge granite, I'd say, you know, your cellar's older than your house. <laughs> And, and, and that what if, where would we, what would those burned. marks look like? Um, uh, a a V-shape, if you cut, cut off the bottom of the V and, uh, you know, had it flat. And it's because they literally uh, used wedges and they'd, they'd take a chisel, they'd chisel that out. They'd put a wedge in. And sometimes what they do is they take a hardwood wedge uh, that was dry and then they'd soak it. Uh, sometimes they wait for winter and they'd freeze it apart. Hmm. No wonder it was so expensive to have granite basement. Yep. 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 And, and then once, you know, a whole lot of the stuff is driven by technology. So once they, uh, once they started drilling granite, granite became cheap and all the, the houses had granite capstones. And then it, it's even cheaper, and they build entire foundations out of cut granite. And the only disadvantage of that is sometimes the soils wouldn't support the weight, and the whole thing would dust in the ground. Now, unfortunately, because they did all of that different types of heating, I am kind of stuck with these grates because matching this flooring would be pretty difficult. Yep. If you if you want a more interesting looking grate, go to Reggio 
registers, R-E-G-G-I-O registers online, and they make reproductions of the old elaborate uh, uh, Victorian traits. The other thing you can consider is you're started on your way to having air conditioning. Dang, that's true. <laughs> Central air, but there's few houses in Sullivan that have that. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we'll do when we're putting a heating system in is to try to put it where it doesn't show unless it's uh, old fashioned radiators, which pe like, people like the looks of. Yeah. So in a kitchen, uh, I'll often right below the sink, I'll put a, a toe, toe kick heater in. And if it's uh, baseboard hot water, it'll have a little fan. And if it's warm air, it'll just have warm air. So when you're standing there doing the dishes, your feet stay warm. I'll do yeah. the same thing around the that bathroom. You know? And then I'll try to hide the rest of the heating system. You'll often find in the old days, uh, when people installed baseboard heat, they just ran it around the outside wall of every single room. Well, it, you don't necessarily need that much baseboard. And they also have baseboard that is, is high capacity baseboard. So if it's in your way, you may be able to reduce the amount of baseboard you've got, which is much cheaper than replacing it. Mm -hmm. Also have you can have on the same boiler, you can have uh, hot water radiators and baseboards. They just can't be the same circuit. And the advantage of, of uh, hot water boilers is you can have more circuits so you can heat different spaces separately without much trouble. You do yeah, have some space to, there. Yeah, we had to take out uh, quite a bit of baseboard because you're right, it was every single wall so when we took out the uh that wall in the kitchen and the wall in the living room baseboard had to go too where sometimes what i've done where i could is i've made the wall thicker over the baseboard and tucked the baseboard sort of into the wall and uh, you know if you're tearing the whole wall down th there's ways to do that but if you're working with existing walls there's just not very many good ways to hide it, yeah. Yeah, I've also done, uh, let's say you're doing bookcases. I'll take the uh, I'll take the baseboard register and I'll move it forward to the front of the bookcase. So you won't see it, it'll be right in the toe space of the, uh, of the uh, 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 bookcases. You can do the same thing in the kitchen in the toe spaces. You can put the, run the baseboard all the way around there. So no matter where somebody's standing in the kitchen, they have warm feet. Mm -hmm. Yep, and you don't have to look at that. Stuff. Exactly. Pretty. And, and, and this is it. To solve problems is time, money, and skill. And mm -hmm. if you spend your time and Bye, buddy. skill, you'll figure out good ways to do things that aren't expensive and are, uh, and, and are beautiful. You know, it's nice to have things beautiful. Think yeah. when you're doing things, you want things to be beautiful, you want them to be practical, and you want them to be valuable. And try mm -hmm. every time to do those three things. And you're guaranteed to fail, but if two out of three isn't bad, you know. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I would add to that list, you need to have patience, especially if you're doing it yourself. Yep. Because you end up with looking at this mess like this all the time, which can get overwhelming. Yep. But if you just have patience, Yep. It will come out beautiful and, you know, everybody else is going to think that it happened overnight. <laughs> there's, there's two other ways to think about it. Uh, some people will finish off one room at a time. So they always have a place to escape to that's beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. th the other thing I recommend is keeping lists. And when you finish something, cross it off the list. And, and you know that you're getting to a good place when there's uh, you there's there's too, you've done too many things to remember and you mm -hmm. can actually count the things until you're done and and then the other part of this is you know you're supposed to be enjoying this mm -hmm. and if you're not enjoying it uh, you're doing it the wrong way you know figure yep. out how you can enjoy it's like living uh, you know there's going to be an end to it 
but try to enjoy the process, you know? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Exactly. That's why we did the kitchen first and that gave us motivation yep. to do, you know, the living room and then the bathroom and then, yep. yeah. But first, first thing first, I guess, was the master bedroom, getting that painted out. So yep. at night we could just go, ah. Oh. <laughs> Or when you wake up, you wake up and don't imme aren't immediately confronted by a nightmare. Right, right. Yep. Scrap pieces of wood, skill saws, chop saws. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, and the other thing to do is lower your standards. Yeah, that's hard. I'm a Virgo. <laughs> yeah, uh, but you're also a pastor, so you don't believe in that stuff. That's right. <laughs> still a perfectionist which i shouldn't be but <laughs> yeah and 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 here's the deal uh and uh being a perfectionist is like trying to divide by two and getting to zero you get closer <laughs> and closer but you can't get there it exactly. is utterly impossible there is uh if there is if you believe in god then it is God that is perfection and it is human beings that are flawed and we should mm -hmm. not be playing God, should we? This is true. So accept, accept the flaws. It's what makes people fun, you know? Yeah. Uh, anybody who tries to be perfect scares the shit out of me. And sometimes when working on an old house, some of the imperfections, what give it its charm. Yeah, the same thing is true with people. You look at your face or you look at my face and you will find that the two sides of, of your face, uh, while they relate to each other, they are not identical. Mm -hmm. That's what makes you human. It's the imperfections that, that, make, that create life, you know, that make you alive. Yeah. And, and you want to join in those things. You know, you don't want to hide them. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. So who's going to be next? I don't know. Raina, where'd you go? Um, who wants to be next? So Ray and I have a trip up scheduled for the last week of March. Um, we're we're gonna be arriving on the 27th. The hope is to stay through to the next weekend. Mm -hmm. um, so we do expect to be there from the 27th to the 3rd. Um, mm -hmm. My mom is having some problems, so I might need to come home by the 1st or the 2nd. Um, but yeah, yeah, we'll be there. Hey, home is in Maine. Right. It is. Home is in Maine, but job and <laughs> is in New York. So, although right now I have my mother staying with me, so I'm getting to work remotely. And um, I guess technically I could do that anywhere, but it's only temporary. So, I've got to tell you something. You know, if you've been following, Maine has some of the best COVID statistics in the country. Uh, right in there with Vermont and Hawaii. And the other thing that's fascinating, you guys are in, in okay. Hancock County, right? Yes. Have you been following uh, real estate prices this year over last? Uh, I, I've got it on a spreadsheet. I know Lincoln County in a year, property values have gone up 45%. I think in Hancock County, they've only gone up 40%. Mm -hmm. And what that is, is people who realize that Maine is one of the best places to live on this earth. It's safe, health-wise, mm -hmm. safe, security-wise, wonderful communities, beautiful. We have some of the health, best health care in, in the United States. And, uh, and, you know, it's, uh, and it goes on from there. And so if you really don't like Maine, it's a good time to sell. Uh, mm -hmm. If you do, uh, it's home, you know, and that's what I'm saying is, is that's the reason people live here is because this is home. You don't live here to get rich or famous. 
to live here because this is the best place to live to be a human Definitely. being. Yeah. We so, can't wait to get back. I mean, yeah. we it's I I I'm not happy being back in New York at all. Mm -hmm. um, so uh it's definitely a temporary thing, but so look, what you're gonna uh, so, do is you're gonna talk to Raina and okay. figure out a good time uh, for you, and then you're gonna email the rest of the class and we're gonna match it up. And meanwhile, and your homework assignment is to get some more class members. Um, yes. And, and if you don't, we're not gonna be able to have fun. Mm -hmm. So oh, what kind of house do you have? have? Fun. What? <laughs> I was what curious about the house. What kind Mine? of house? Hers. Oh, Me? So you, if you go to the Asheville church, you pass us all the time because we we have the farmstead barn, um, the red and white oh. barn and the little white house. The little cave. Um, that's there. And my son right now, and actually Gary just said that they tapped our, our maple trees in the front again, which is good because we're out of syrup that you um, gave us last year. Uh, but we we have, that's the house that we have lived in and that my son temporarily between college goes to, for, you know, for the weekends. Um, and then there's another house higher, no, far, farther north on the property. Um, uh, it's called a cottage, but it's five bedrooms and like three bathrooms. And we just had electricity brought to that mm -hmm. um, last year. And then that's when we realized we had no more money um, to do <laughs> anything else. So uh, yeah, so, but there's, there's a lot. There's, I mean, you know, Gary has, has been there and is familiar with the property. And um, you know, my husband Ray is, he likes to say everything is easy, just like I heard Les say, um, mm -hmm. but unfortunately it's not always we're, that. We're rel I'm related to your husband, you know that. Are you? You oh, must yeah. be. It, 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 yeah, even, even if it's not genetically, you definitely are on the same page with that. Um, but we have, I think the house was originally built. There's several pieces of the house. Mm -hmm. The house, the Cape, that is what you first see, you know, closest to the street. I believe was built in around 1760, right, Gary? Mm -hmm. And was moved up. I think it was a little later. A uh, little later. The, the ashes, uh, Josiah and his brother John had the house down here, around here somewhere on the shore. Okay, the bean, yeah, there was a Josiah up. Bean. Yeah, Josiah Bean. So if we look at his, the dates, because they were both bachelors and they, uh, so they could, I mean, they could have built it when they were 15, 16, 17, 18 years old. That wouldn't have been unusual back in the past. Right. So we'll, we'll look at that. Little yeah, puzzle. Ebenezer was their, Ebenezer Bean was their father. Yeah. He owned it first. Um, I actually went through, because I was working at the Bangor Public Library and, and was, um, head of the local history department and was looking through a lot of the things I can find their, um, you know, their probate, like Ebenezer Beans probate and like things like that were still in the barn when he died. So oh. I'm not sure exactly, but I believe one piece of the house was moved. There's another piece that was part of the barn, I like was was almost like a little piece of a barn. It has the barn door and it has two bedrooms upstairs. We were calling it the servants' quarters for a while. Like that's just what we oh, yes, I remember we've been in there. I remember that section you're talking about. It's very different. Yeah, yeah it's very different. And then there's like a bree two breezeways that have been built in between, which has our kitchen and the laundry room. And stairs up to the uh, to like a separate attic, like so. There's there's three distinct sections of the house. The one that was a barn has the floor is like a swoop, <laughs> and that's it's bad. And you can bounce, and the dogs love running around in it. Um, and you know the the Wexlers who we bought it from uh, the trust that. Uh, Ginny Wexler, they bought it in 1970, 
and they did a ton of work on it and really did a, a good job of maintaining you know the house there's updated electric and there was some foundation work done at one time but that piece was her husband's office and and her her stepson's room upstairs and it seems like almost as if when her husband passed away in 1992 that kind of office just almost got sealed off yeah. um, yeah. and not not worked on um, and then there, you know, so it's, that's why I figured Ray and I would do two separate houses because yeah. then there's the cottage up at the other part of the property. And that's like a kit house um, that didn't have electricity, but is like amazing and beautiful and just needs some updates. The, the farmhouse is like a mess. Yeah. Judy, that had had electricity, just that the Yes. Uh, the line leading into it had fallen over. Right. Now, the when piece we that you were talking this. about that was Wexler's office, pretty sure that was the part that was a tea house back in the mm, 30s and 40s. It, uh, it's been two different tea houses. One was the willow tree, um, oh. which uh, was, was first. Oh. And then it was the farmstead tea room. Um, and I'm not sure if it was that part or the house part, which was used, but definitely the porch and the kitchen are set up in a way that it could have been used as like a, a commercial kitchen. You know, yeah. it seems like it could have been done that, but I've never seen pictures except for from the outside. And, and, and of course, Judy, I think it was so interesting that, that when the tea house, I don't know which one, but when the tea house was open, the two Shaker ladies were, they went and found a couple of Shaker ladies that would come up and do the cooking and serving and the yes. whole thing. Well, and that was one of the things I loved listening about Norm's stories too, because, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I tend to be, um, you know, I mean, I, I love l learning about the history through women's eyes and th that perspective. And so when I hear that she bought the property from her father and she sold the pieces of land to several other women and, you know, so sold those houses, I just feel like that's, those are stories that don't always get told in, in history. Um, mm -hmm. So even when I look at my property, the fact that, um, uh, you know, it was owned by Ebenezer Bean and his, and then, and his wife there, we have a cemetery that um, lists all the children that they had. And then Josiah and John were the ones who really took over, I guess. And they had a housekeeper, Judith Ash. My name is Judith Ashby, just saying. Uh -huh. Right. Right. Just saying, but Judith Ash was listed in the the um, as their housekeeper in all of the censuses right. from right. like nineteen no from eighteen twenty I guess was the first time they listed women or eighteen thirty I, I I have all of the records saved until she passed away and she's buried in that cemetery she's the only non family member buried hmm. there um and so like i just want to know more about her for sure i she was she was she was born her mother was 12. wow really yeah. you you found that out wow it does seem that way because it's her last name was ash and yeah. so i think that's near where your house was she was from that so abigail ash was um Oh, Abigail Ash's Richardson. Ashes point. Yeah. point that the Shefflin zone now. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's just fascinating to me. And then um, our house does have it. We have the fireplace from what I guess would have been the kitchen area that we use as the dining room. Um, and the fireplaces are all closed up because they mm -hmm. have a shared um, chimney too. So I don't believe we were, it's safe to use them. But yes, they it are. has one of yes, those honey. They are. Yes, oh, they, they are. are. 
Oh, well, yeah. we'll have to get it. It has yeah. one of those um, ovens where oven. you, the honey oh. beehive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, love so it's just, love it. Okay, we gotta, we gotta see it. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, you know, Ray, Ray and I both have been vaccinated because in New York, they're giving out vaccines to lots of different groups now and it's not age related and I'm a teacher and he works for um, the Long Island Railroad. So we both are fully vaccinated. So, you know, you're welcome to come by and we could do something. I mean, if we mm -hmm. want, we, we could bring you less in on, um, on video but if anybody's uh -huh. around, they'd yeah. be welcome. So some Sunday, if I'm driving by and I see the Volkswagen, I could knock on the door. Uh, Absolutely. The, the Volkswagen or the red truck? I drive the Volkswagen. My husband drives a red pickup truck. If it's somebody else, it's my son. Oh, well, sometimes we have U-Haul trucks there too. We Because we're always finding things down here. Like there's a Habitat for Humanity Restore. And we found like, dirt cheap appliances and we're like hey we could use that stove up in the cottage <laughs> so we buy it down here for you know a hundred bucks and we cart it up there we bought a whole set of kitchen cabinets to put someplace so yeah we're we're a little crazy like that but it's a good kind and i feel like i found my people here i've got a Ooh. question for you guys about a place in sullivan there's uh, back when I was doing a lot of uh, educating of real estate agents out of Matthias and, uh, and uh, whatchamacallit, uh, Ellsworth, there was a house we used over and over again in Sullivan. And uh, a really old house that was falling apart belonged to a couple that was fighting with each other. And it was on Bridgeham Hill Road. Hill Hill. Yep. Whatever yes. happened to that house? Oh, <laughs> it went, it, it got really in rough shape, but oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when we first bought our property, we could walk to it from where we lived down in East Sullivan. Yep, and uh, a fellow named Don Stoke bought it 15 years ago. I don't know, not that long. Well, 10 to 12 years ago, and he's yep. he's been doing a lot of work on it, it looks really good, yep. and uh, he's I'm done glad. a history of it. It was in awful shape, and and he's he. You tell him first of all, I should be in our class, but second of all, uh, tell him that I'm proud of him because you know every time we toured through that damn thing, it was in worse shape, and you just mm. didn't know what to say, you know. And apparently, it was it was a couple who were having a bitter divorce, and the house yeah. was in the middle. You know? It's only Where? about it's only about three hundred yards up. The old route where the old route one is from Judy's house. Yeah, they're right. They're walking distance from yeah. from our. In fact, part of our property is abutting their property. Right. Yeah. yeah. So it's yeah. on the road, or there's the gravel road that kind of goes uh, from where my barn is. Yeah. And uh -huh. it and it connects to Asheville Road, I believe. Right. Yeah, and it's, it's it it is a private road. Yes. Yeah. But if you wanted to go in and check out something, I don't think anybody would mind. Yeah. <coughs> you know, what, uh, you can go to my house and then and then get lost. Yeah. You, can't, you can't see it from Route One anymore, then, huh? No, no, you can't see the house. No, you no, still do with the water. It's way up on a hill. Yeah, Brigham Hill. Yep, I've got pictures of. When Brigham Hill didn't have a tree on it, and you look down over to the bay where our house is, there ain't a tree in sight. Yep. Yeah, yep. I have a picture. It looks like it's actually an aerial shot of our property down, you know, like from above the cottage, uh, down the hill. You can oh. see the the barns, the farmhouse, and up through to the waterfront. No trees. Um, it was all just, oh. you know, bare just rocks right and, and now there's houses down there and we have a 100 by 100 little square, um, <laughs> which see. is all I need of, of Bayfront and a right of way to get to it. So, so your oh. second house is up Blueberry Cottage Lane. Yes, mm -hmm. that gotcha. is our second house. Oh, he's on Google Earth. You're on Google yeah. Earth. 
Yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I have to say, I love, I really do love that, like our barns and our house are visible for everyone to see, yeah. because I just think they're so cool. Um, oh, they are. They're fantastic. Yeah. Are you going to have concerts there? I want to. I would love to. We would we would love to make it an event space um, for people to be able to, you know. I mean, this is pre-COVID, our thought was we could do music events, we could do weddings or parties, um, you know, but it needs work. It needs help. Yeah. No, for, for history, uh, uh, when we first started coming to Sullivan, Jenny Davis was who actually was a professional actress. She acted on Broadway, a singer. They were running one week a, 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 in July for two weekends or something. She brought in shows, um, mostly vaudeville type acts and storytellers and music people uh, for the kids. Wow. Right? Uh, you know, any kid could come in and I'd love to do that. I'd love to do something like that. I know. She did that for over 20 years. We have the posters that were done for, and uh, we used to take our kids when we came down for vacation. Yeah, and we have a bunch of that stuff too. And the, and the theater is, is um, just as it was left. So. Oh, unfortunately, it was a lot easier to do that at that time because the Maine Arts Commission had a, a wonderful program called the Touring Aww. Artist Program. Yep. And if people like Judd the Jester and uh, other entertainers uh, joined the program, then, then uh, a, a nonprofit organization, or I used it in my municipal programs, could write a grant and get a lot of the cost of, of the entertainment to do the show. And Virginia had a and lot of... Matter of fact, it was kind of funny. Uh, we were doing New Year's Eve Holton and coming down here and seeing the same artists that were doing shows in my rec center down here in Virginia's barn. And Virginia had a lot of connections because her family yes. had been artists, you know, musical artists. And the Monto uh, school Monto was school. her was her brother in law. Um, so we we have a lot of the the history. And Mavis or Melissa Davis, who is our neighbor, is her <laughs> niece. And you know we have a good relationship with her too. So there's just a lot of cool stuff. It's fun. Yeah. Well, hey, great. Oh, oh, to, to sort of get us back on track, Raina. Yep. You and Judy are going to get together. Give us some times and dates for our next class meeting. Then you're going to email them to all of us, and we're going to try to pick one through one of those pick them programs that ever works for everybody. Okay. Is that where we are? And I'm sure. Oh, Survey Monkey. Survey uh, Monkey. Yeah. Doodle. 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 And, and by then, I'll have my computer back and my calendar and stuff like that, and it'll get easier. All right, so Raina, we'll touch base. Yeah. Yeah, I'll send you an email, we can pick something. Yeah. Okay. And your homework assignment is to uh, find some other sucker to join us. I, I have one, I'll, I'll rope him in and he'll be here next time, hopefully. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I don't know if he counts. <laughs> yeah. And I want your, I want that house up the hill because I want to see what happened. You tell your neighbor that Go I need on. his house. All yeah. right. I, I, yeah, we'll talk to him. Reach out to the Snokes. <laughs> yeah, do that. Well, I talk. I, I correspond with him fairly regular for, on other matters, so yeah, I'll put a bug in his ear. Yep. Yep. He's done a lot of work on that house. Oh, I know. It's a, a it's work. a beautiful house, but it's you know, people are priceless. Objects are not, and uh, boy, those people mm -hmm. do consider each other priceless, I can tell you that. Yeah. So. Uh, question, the, for the next class, Judy, will, will we be enjoying both your properties or will, are those uh, two separate classes? Well, I think 
it'll probably be one at a time, mainly yeah. because yeah. it would be too much to cover yeah. both. Yeah. Um, right. So, yeah, uh, I don't know whether, I guess we'll have to pick which one we do first. Um, I'll talk to Ray about that and see what he thinks um, and Raina. Um, yep. So I'll okay. have to figure that out. Is there anything else we want to do today? I do. Yep. Get back to work, I guess. <laughs> and, and, and thank you, Norm, because it was fascinating. I mean, and, and Gary, too, if you guys all went through those pictures and found them. Yep. I mean, mm -hmm. that is just, it was so fascinating to watch. And if you guys, if Raina, you can share the recording. I know I was texting Ray. I'm like, oh my God, you're going to love this. He wants to watch it. So, Yeah, I also did the uh, genealogy of the, the family that lived here just because I was so curious. And that's how I found out it stayed in the family, even though there were different names, is because women would get married, take their husband's name, and then get the house and then yeah. you know it was just really cool and then and so really i didn't see the whole thing because i had to go get my second shot but what i did see was really interesting yeah. you're doing great and judy i'll i'll go through our photographs between now and the time you get up here and see what i can find Unfortunately, the main photographer that we have has worked from that earlier period lived in Norm's neighborhood and not up here. So he didn't right. do a lot of shooting up in the mm -hmm. East, East Sullivan. Well, I have, um, you know, I have like some advertisements from when it was from the newspapers, from when it was a tea oh, room. So cool. I have like the, the list of some of the things that were passed down with the house. You know, just so I don't have pictures, but I have some some ephemera that I will. Yeah, we'll go sharing. through what we have. Yeah, if you find any any photos, um, that would be awesome. So. Hey, hey Gary and Norm and Raina, uh, we're recording this. So can can we put this recording on the Sullivan Historical Society website so other people in town can see? Yeah, that'd be great to have a history of this house recorded. And, it might and, be a good tool to to uh, to uh, encourage some other folks to uh, to join in. Well, and then at some point we could like you you were talking about for the bicentennial, and then clearly COVID, you know, mm. got in that plan. But like you had talked about maybe wanting to put flags out or something like that. Right. There are. Could, because I was working at the Bangor Public Library, I know that there are some, uh, you can do walking tours, yep. or for our case, it might be a driving tour, but, but yep. there are apps that you can put on. I mean, people mm. drive through our area so much to get to different places that, you know, that would be something that we could put out there as even just a driving tour, right? Like you could see- Well, we're, we're, working, we're working, Judy, with, uh, Northeast Acadia Tourism, who has some state funds. I've been involved with that for years. Uh, and through some of their uh, grant money, we're working on a story map that's going to cover much of much of uh, uh, the Scudic, well, it's going to cover the Scudic Byway that goes from Hancock down through and will in include going through Sullivan. And some of these houses can end up on that story map eventually yeah That's i mean part of the plan even, even just stories of regular people during yeah. that time is amazing you know so mm -hmm. uh, judy yeah. just i hate to bring up a whole new subject but judy did you you do know about the pot of gold that the brothers I did. Dug up in the field right i read that story and i i I did buy a um, metal detector, but I don't know how to use it. My brother has one, so I was like, "Come on up, maybe, you know, we'll we'll get we'll we don't need to find much, just a little, so that we can put a little work into it." <laughs> Unfortunately, I think that I was on land that's now owned by somebody else. My gosh! I, <laughs> yeah. the other I have a similar thing. story because uh, remember I showed you that in my room they patched up the ceiling because the electrician fell through. 
Well, <laughs> when he was running wires, he found several mason jars filled with money. There was over a hundred thousand dollars in mason jar that he brought down and gave to the homeowner. Yeah. So after the renovations were done, she whisked her mom down to South Carolina, but she refused to let anybody in the house just in case. There are some mason jars hidden somewhere in this house. Well, we, we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed that. Yeah, I have know, not found any. <laughs> we don't want anyone to get hurt if they fall through a ceiling. No injuries, but a few jars. Well, we few jars have, nice. we have found um, music, sheet music uh, that is from Langston Hughes. And oh, wow. a note and his signature on it. Um, and then up in the cottage, we also found um, a Khalil Gibran, the prophet, um, oh. to the jo Mrs. John Carey Spring, who owned the property at one point. So yeah, really cool stuff. Yeah, the Spring House, the, 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 uh, the house that uh, Les was talking about is sometimes known as the spring house and there was a school up there the brigham hill school but it, it blocked her view of of flanders bay so she bought it tore it down and gave the town money to build a, a, a school down on the flatland mm -hmm. <laughs> So. Story. <laughs> All right, so I am actually okay. supposed to be working during this time. So. All right, guys, it's been great. Thanks, Dom. Okay. See you later. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Norm.